Alright, so today I'll be doing a oil change on my Honda ST1300. It's a 2006, 2006. And basically I'm just doing this as a little quick tutorial for motorcycle oil changes, and in particular the ST1300. Um, Alright, quick thing about oil here. Uh, I picked 10 weight 40. Uh, that's due to the mild temperature that's here in Europe, that, in this particular country I'm in. It doesn't get really hot, it doesn't get really cold. Um, so I'm using the 10 weight 40 for, especially during the summer here. Um, make sure you d use motorcycle oil and don't use car, car oil, especially synthetic car oil. Because if you use synthetic car oil, it's actually going to cause your clutch not to stick. And you're not going to be able to engage properly. Um, and you, you'll just feel a world of mess. So make sure you get motorcycle oil. And like in this case, it even says specifically wet clutch. So, all right. And then I have my K&N filter here. Uh, the reason I used K&N is mainly because of this lock nut on the top. Uh, it allows me to just use a nut instead of a oil wrench to get up in there. <clears throat> and on my bike, there's a couple of little tight areas up here against the against the oil, or excuse me, against the engine, where it would be difficult to get a oil wrench in there. So it's a lot easier with this nut on top of there. Uh, in which case, this is a 17 millimeter nut. And then I have my five millimeter Allen wrench to take off the body panel, which is not necessary, and I'll show you that in a second. But I do it anyway, just so I don't get oil all over it. Uh, of course, roll paper towels funnel uh, for refueling the, refilling the oil. I got a paper bag or a uh, trash bag just in case we have any extra spillage or anything. I'll put it under the bucket and that's the bucket. There's already some stuff in there uh, from the mini project that I'm working on. So, All right. All right, so, oh, let me do a quick walk around here first. Um, this is the panel I'm talking about removing. It's this plastic foot or plastic panel near the footboard. Um, the oil paint, or excuse me, the oil filter is right under here. And I just don't want to get oil on the bottom of this and have it sit there and then once the exhaust starts getting hot and I'll start to smell it and I just don't want that. So I'm just going to take it off to prevent any of that from happening. Uh, which is one, two, three, four, five, five Allen, five millimeter Allen bolts. Uh, some of those are very specific to which hole they go in, so I'll make sure you keep that in mind. All right, so I got that fairing off there. Uh, remember, just think one thing to remember is, like I said, keep these screws in the holes they need to go in. The reason being is that if you look at them, you see they're different screws. They got a different shape head on the top, and this one has like a notch on it, and that's just to fill the extra room. So. So you want to make sure you keep those in the right holes. Some of them even have a different size thread, so just something to look out for. Uh, another thing, at the front of the fairing, where it holds it on, uh, up, up front, underneath, you'll see one of these. And if you don't know how these work, they're pretty simple. They're going to be pushed in just like this, and whenever you want to remove them, just take a pair of needle nose pliers, pull on the top of that head. It'll come down like that. And then you can just pull the whole thing out because it's going to release pressure on the top right there. All right. <clears throat> so, now that we have that off, you can see in here, that's where the filter is. Mine's on sideways. It's not on straight up and down. Some of them are. All right, so on the right side of the bike, you're going to see this panel right here. And this is just an access panel, so you can take the top engine cover off. Um, and the way that works is that, once again, I'll just use my pair of needle nose pliers here. You just push right here in the center of this push pin. <clears throat> and now that's going to release pressure on that, uh, on that plug. So you just pull it up just like that, and it comes right out. Just be careful of this top, just be careful of this top pin. And, uh, because it is, it is fragile. So when you pull it out, pull it out just like this. Uh, don't try to pull it straight out or, or twist it too far because it will break. And underneath this engine cover is the oil fill. And the way you get this off is you can just take two fingers, pop it up just like that, and then it slides forward uh, towards the front of the bike. All right. And then right here is your engine fill or your oil fill cap. 
All right, so we're back on the left side of the bike, and this is the point where everything starts uh, coming together. All right, right here on the bottom of the oil pan, and like I said, this is on the left side of the bike, the side that we took the fairing off. Here is your oil drain plug. Now your oil drain plug is also the same size. Wow, my dogs are going crazy. Okay, uh, my, the oil drain plug is also the same size as that nut that's on top of the oil filter, which is a 17 millimeter. It says almost. It's almost as if they thought that out. All right, so once you're ready to actually start draining the oil, go ahead and let your bike run. Um, don't let it get all the way up to operating temperature because then you run the risk of burning your hands on the exhaust, which you will do anyway, uh, or which you run the risk of anyway. Um, but just get it up to a nice warm temperature where the block is, is good and warm to the touch. That way uh, your oil is nice and lubricated. It's warmed up. It's a little more... Uh, liquid it, it's a little more liquidy uh, for lack of a better word that I can't think of right now viscous it's a little little more viscous um, so it'll flow better out of the engine you'll get more out of the engine so when you put your new oil in you'll get as much in as possible or as much new oil in as possible so I got it loose now what I'm gonna start looking for is right around the edge like right no, not quite you'll start to see oil seeping out and that's what I'm looking for, so I can get it clean and loose, and then I can go ahead and put my drain bucket underneath. All right, so I went ahead and pulled the oil out. Uh, here's my oil drain plug. Luckily, I didn't drop it in. If you do, it's not really a big deal. You can just take a magnet and go ahead and scrape it along the bottom of the, the pail or the catch bucket, whatever you're using, to go ahead and pull up. All right, the... while we're waiting for that, uh, that oil right there to drain, I'm just going to go ahead and point out your drain plug. You'll see a washer on there, or you should have a washer on there. If not, you want to check underneath your oil pan and see if it's still stuck there, um, or if it fell in. And if you still don't find one, uh, then you have a problem, and you want to get one. Uh, the reason being is it's for it's basically a, a gasket, and it's used to put pressure against the bottom of the oil pan and between the bolt itself. Uh, that way, you don't gouge up the bolt here and then you will no longer have a seal so instead if you do gouge it when you're tightening it down you'll gouge the washer and you can just replace the washer. All right, so after looking at the filter a little bit more I'm not going to be able to get my pail into there well it's not going to do me any good when I do get it under there um, just because of the way and the angle that this filter is at so I'm just going to set up my trash bag here because I need a trash bag anyway to throw away all my extra containers and everything um, and any extra oil that comes down, which it shouldn't be a lot, uh, will go into this bag. Just watch out for those exhaust pipes. Alright, so now that I've got my oil filter loose, and I know that's going to come off relatively easily, um, I'm going to go ahead and prime my new filter and basically what I want to do is I just want to go ahead and pour it in there. Um, there's a little knob inside of this one. I don't know if you can see it, uh, but it's a, I'm just using that as a reference line. I usually fill it up to about there and then I go ahead and take the filter out and I just run it along the edges. That way the oil can get soaked into the filter that's in there. All right. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to run a bead of oil. I'm just going to use my finger, rub it around this oil, this oil seal here. Go ahead and take some of this oil, rub it on, just so I get a nice tight seal. When I screw it onto the engine. All right. So now that this is ready, I'll go ahead and get this ready. Just swap out as quickly as possible so I don't get oil from the old filter all over everything. All right, and that went relatively well. Just make sure this is good, and I don't see any more oil in there, so that means the filter soaked it up, which is good. All right. 
So with this ready, let's go ahead and screw this right back on. Now, oil filters only really need to be about hand tight, um, but with that bolt on the back, it just makes it a little easier to get to for those final couple tightening stages. But you don't want to tighten it down all the way, because then you won't be able to get it off the next time. Not a drop spill. Actually, I did get a little bit on the exhaust. Yeah. Sorry about getting a little excited about the not drop not spill, but when you got to do this on any vehicle, car, motorcycle, what have you, you'll understand. And if you have done it, then you definitely understand. All right. So like I said, your oil filter doesn't really need to be any more than hand tight. But with that nut on the back of there, just really helps get you that extra last couple turns. All right, so we're back on the right side of the bike. I got the, uh, the oil fill cap off here. Uh, just take a look at the seal that's on there. Uh, Honda recommends every time you change your oil to replace that seal. Mine looks perfectly fine. I did it a couple oil changes ago. It's not in any way indented or misshapen. So, I mean, it pretty much looks brand new, actually. So I, I'm not going to change mine. But that's entirely up to you. Like I said, if, if you look at it and you see any kind of damage or anything on it, I would go ahead and change it. Go ahead and take your funnel. Uh, this one's got a pretty skinny... Some fuzz on there. This one's got a pretty skinny uh, tip at the front. Makes it a little easier for me to look down in there and see if the oil is about to overflow and come out. Uh, because this oil, or all oil when you go to fill your engines, could potentially not flow down to the engine as fast as you would want it to, and then it's going to overflow onto the cover, on the valve cover, and then onto your engine block, and then create an unpleasant smell when you go to run your engine, and it gets hot. Now when I go to add the oil, I know how much oil my bike takes, but if this is your first time changing your bike oil, or it's a brand new bike, and you're not familiar with it, um, then always look at your oil fill line, or if you have a dipstick, uh, let's say if your bike is recommended to take five quarts, I'd go ahead and put four and a half in and then look at it. Give it about five, ten minutes to settle. That'll give you your nice baseline for your oil measurement. And uh, go ahead and add extra if necessary. All right, so that's four. Um, I know that mine's going to take four and a quarter, uh, even though it's a five quart oil change. And the reason being, as there is always going to be oil residue left inside the engine. Um, so that's why you want to run it hot, or you want to get it engine warm, as warm as possible before you start. And I can look at mine right now. Yep, and that's actually just about on the line, so I don't know if you can really see it. I keep referring to this, but you probably can't even see it. Um, but here's this, this circle right here, and the two lines. And right now it's just just about even with the back line, but a little bit above. So what I think I'm gonna do is even though I only have four in there and it usually takes four and a quarter, I'm gonna go ahead and start the bike, let it run for about five minutes, um, let the, in, the oil circulate, uh, and then go ahead and let it sit for another five minutes after the oil's been circulating, uh, or excuse me, turn the engine off, then let it sit for five minutes. Let it all settle, I'll check the oil level again, uh, just to make sure we're spot on, and then That'll be that. So after a wash, wax, and buff, I couldn't end the video having people think I didn't care about my bike or it looking like a turd. So went ahead and washed it, waxed it, and buffed it. Um, but yeah, please comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Uh, if you want to see either more videos or you have any questions or anything like that. Um, Yeah, and definitely check out my other videos. I got, you know, if you're interested in working on cars, I can pretty much fix or tell you how to fix or give you advice on any kind of vehicle maintenance, um, motorcycle maintenance, anything that really has wheels and moves with the motor. So just let me know. And uh, just remember, don't pay a body shop to do it or don't pay an auto shop to do it. You can do it yourself and you'll get more pleasure, enjoyment, and fun out of it.